file and scanner. My name is Kayla Blanton. Real world situation. A teacher needs to calculate all of the students' grades in her class. The teacher already has all of the grades saved in separate files. However, the current program has a lengthy runtime. Below is an example of one of the files with the grades in it. Next to it is an example of sample output for the program. Usage. Pass a file object to a scanner object. File creates a connection between an existing file and the program. Scanner reads data from the file instead of from system.in. An example shows how to incorporate this in your program. File my file equals new file of your text file. Scanner in file equals new scanner and you pass my file to scanner. Advantages. Multiple data entries can be read from a single line using Scanner. Scanner can read consecutive lines with no additional prompting. It uses familiar methods from the Scanner class. It also may return data as types other than string. Below is an example of reading multiple data entries from the same line, as well as reading consecutive lines with no additional prompting. The first number would be read using an extent the second using next double, and the third using next line. Scanner methods. Data does not have to be read as a string and then parsed to a different data type. These methods include next double, next int, and next line. You can use the exist method to determine if a file exists. You may also use has next to determine if there is more data in a file. The example below uses the exist method to determine if the file exists. Adding a throws clause. A program throws an exception when an unexpected error occurs. When the error occurs, the executing method must deal with it or throw it again. Writing throws IO exception allows exceptions of the type IO exception to be thrown. An example below shows where to place the throws IO exception clause within your program. It immediately follows your main header. This causes the method to suspend normal execution if an error occurs. An example of the throws error from JGrasp. If you are referencing a file that does not exist, such as grades1.txt, it will create this error message when you try to compile the program. Using hasnext to reach file end. To do this, we will use a while loop and using the condition as nfile.hasnext. This means the while loop will not execute if there is no more data to be read from the file. Inside the while loop, we will read the data from the file, put it into grade, update total, print the grade to ensure that the while loop is executing correctly, and then add to the count. Solution. Initially, the teacher used a program using a file reader and buffered reader. However, all of the data had to be parsed from strings to doubles. She switched the format of the program so that it used file and scanner, thus allowing the grades to be read in as doubles. Create this program grade average.java. I have already typed in the import statements for java.io.asterisk, java.util.asterisk, and javax.swing.asterisk respectively to um, access the file methods, the scanner methods, and JOption pane. We have declared our header and thrown the IO exception so that if an exception does occur, the program can continue functioning. We have declared our variables, um, a double for grade, and notice this time we did not have to declare a string variable input because we can input data from the file as whatever type of variable we wish to use. We've similarly declared total, average, and count. Now we need to create a connection between the file and the program. To do this, we will um, create a file object, file my file equals new file, and it will be accessing grades.txt. We will also create a new scanner object, and we're going to call this in file instead of the normal keyboard because we will be using scanner to read from a file. And instead of passing system.in 
to Scanner, we will be passing my file so that it will read from the file. Now we need to create a while loop. Um, this will verify that there is data left in the file to be read. It will also read all of the data from the file as long as there is more data. So with the scanner class, we use the method dot has next, which we can't use with any other class. Um, then we'll use the variable to say that grade is equal to in file because that was our scanner method dot next double because we want to read in a double as the grade. And then we will update the total information for total plus equals grade. And then we'll print the grade. And then update the count because we've just added another grade. Notice this is a lot shorter of code than for grade average 2.java. We didn't have to um, initialize the file that we were reading from and initialize all of the variables. And as you see, we have um, the average equals total over count, and then we're printing the average down here with J option pane, and then we close the file. Whoops, and I didn't do count plus plus. I just put semicolon, semicolon. Okay, count plus plus. And we'll compile again. And now we'll run it. And it gives us the correct average, so it works.